the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, uh, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, my co-host, AJ Epigarth. What's going on, man? Yo, 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 yo. What up? Are, are you a pirate? <laughs> What's going on here? No, I didn't say yo-ho, yo-ho. I you said yo-ho. I said yo-yo, <laughs> yo, like yo, yo. All right, all right, all right. There's a difference here. Come on. All right, I'll take your word for it. Um, all right, so we got a good show tonight. We're gonna talk some dynasty fantasy football as you know the draft is concluded. We've got you know big time dynasty drafts starting up, you know, rookie drafts going, so it's time to get in to all things dynasty and make sure we're ready for this. Um, but first, man, I, I want to I wanna ask your quick opinion on this Trevor Plouffe tweet that happened what a couple days ago. And uh, he was like, oh, you know, I've heard from multiple sources or whatever that baseball is going to start July 1. Spring training 2 is going to start mid-June. Nothing has been co- nothing's been official at this point. But, I mean, are you even remotely believing this? I, I'm not going to believe anything until I actually see it. Honestly, it, so much is going on and, and so much changes seemingly every day mm-hmm. um I, I just don't i don't know what's going on i did see on uh, on espn earlier that they were putting their proposal together to get the season underway or talk about getting it underway i, I didn't have a chance to read the actual article but uh i mean could it happen sure will it i don't know yeah i have no idea at this point i just thought it was funny and it got a lot of obviously got a lot of attention so I mean, we've heard early June, early July, mid to late June for a while now as just kind of rumors. So I -hmm. wouldn't be surprised if it happens, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it didn't. So I don't know. Whatever. Um, The other news NFL wise is the schedules were released tonight. They were released about 730 p.m. to all the teams and they were brought, you know, put out on the websites immediately. Uh, ESPN, NFL every network is on this like gigantic release show three hours long. So I will not be able to, and you probably will not be able to do any sort of uh, examination of the schedules by this week, but maybe next week we dive into it a little bit more. I did, however, notice that the Redskins and the Eagles play week one. So if the season actually does happen, uh, you and I are meeting up somewhere to watch that damn game. So (laughs) virtually, of course, Maybe. maybe maybe hey maybe at that point Zoom we don't meeting. have to all right whatever we you can, can we come can over a couple and, bar stools between us we'll be right, fine you can come over to my house I, I sit six feet apart from you it's cool i'm starting to give up on this guy man i'm tired of it <laughs> what's up? as long as you're not coughing i'm good i'm i'm not <laughs> anyway excuse me <laughs> i know right as i'm going <laughs> um all right so let's do our beer of the week and then jump right into it what do you say yeah, let's do it. Mm, beer. I right, mate. You know what? I'm gonna be a little selfish this week. I'm gonna start first. It's been a while. Um, Go so for I'm it. doing a a burly oak, tangled up in green. It's actually a triple IPA, ten uh, percent. So I'm going strong tonight, man. Uh, it's actually a, it's a dank IPA, which I don't usually go for, but um, I don't know. I saw you. it and hadn't had it in a while and hadn't had one of those in a while and gave it a shot. I, look, the dankness of it, I'm not going to lie, did did knock it down a notch, but it is a solid, solid beer, man. Uh, I, uh, I'm enjoying it. I gave it a four on untapped. It's got enough like fruity notes in it and things like that. They kind of mellow out the dankness. So, But you definitely do taste the dankness of it, which, which does, like I said, it knocked it down a whole t- a whole, a whole, um, n- yeah, notch on untapped. Probably would have, probably would have, have, probably would have gotten, uh, I swear I've only had a, <laughs> like two sips of this. Yeah. Um, sure. Sure. <laughs> hey, 10%. Don't mess with it. Uh, but anyway, it's solid, man. I recommend it. Excellent. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, actually managed to go out and hit up the beer store earlier. I got, 
like a hundred and sixty dollars worth of alcohol. Oh, um, holy crap! If I did, <laughs> not that, all of it for me. <laughs> uh, if, I, if I pulled that and brought that home, my wife would probably leave. <laughs> Well, I left it in the car and then just unloaded the other groceries I got first <laughs> and then took it immediately to the basement. So, um, but yeah, some of it's for, for my wife and for mother's day. And then, uh, yeah, I just, I just kind of loaded up on beers. So I got a four pack of Trogues independent brewing lolly hop. It's a dry hopped, uh, double IPA with mosaic citra and Azaka hops. Nice. Um, yeah, it's a 8.2%. So not, not as, not as high as yours. I had another one that I wanted to, wanted to kick into, but it, it, uh, did not get cold enough. So, um, I'm going with this one, but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. I like it so far. Good stuff. Good stuff. I mean, well, let's not delay any longer. Let's bring on our guest, Matt Hicks, uh, COO of the dynasty draft room and the podcast there. Uh, contributor for Gridiron Experts, and he also does some college football, specifically SEC for Fan Sided. Uh, Matt, you there? Hey, man, how's it going? Glad to be on here with you guys. Yeah, good, Absolutely. man. How you doing tonight? I'm feeling good, man. I, uh, I'm, I'm excited. You know, schedule release. I feel like we're one step closer. Uh, we're just gonna keep hoping that we start on time and right? that we get some kind of college football season. I feel you, man. It's, it's a big hope and prayer at this point. I have a feeling so. <laughs> They're going to try their hardest. So, all right, man. Well, so we've got you on here tonight to kind of roll through some dynasty questions and, and topics for us. You know, dynasty is what happening is what's happening right now. Um, startups, rookie drafts, you name it. Um, redrafts aren't going to happen for at least a couple months. In most cases, you'll get your hardcore people doing them now. But I, I think for the most part, those happen in late July and then all through August, right? So um, I've got a couple that are, that are rolling here soon. Another startup of mine uh, going up here in a couple of weeks, I think. So wanted to roll into this and just get another opinion here with Dynasty. People are, you know, they hear us chitter chatter about all this stuff all the time. So it's always good to get somebody else's voice up here. So um, let's jump right into it, man. Let's start with just the, the basics of Dynasty League setup. Just kind of your preference and, and pros and cons of, of the of the two sides here or, or you know whatever it may be. So first off foremost, like super flex or one QB leagues. Yeah, man, it's uh it's it's super flex all day for me. Um unless unless I have a really good reason, I'm not joining a, a league if it's not super flex at this point. Yeah, I, I kind of feel you. Uh the first dynasty I did, and I'm still in it. Uh, was one QB and I kind of, I, I, not, I regret, it. I didn't set it up, but um, I think the league regrets not doing it because you literally can't trade quarterbacks in that league. Like there's, mm -hmm. they, they have no value. Um, I think the only reason why you don't go super flex is if it's like a 20 man league, right? Because then it's like, eh, like you can't even, but like even then, like you could probably get away with it. It's just there's going to be a couple teams that don't have super flex quarterbacks. Um, yeah, that's yeah. going to be, that's going to be hard. <laughs> so my uh my one my one league that i play in that's one qb is, is 16 teams and uh i was still a proponent of it um uh, because it adds that extra element right it makes them even more valuable but right. you know I, I understood the argument at that point and it's actually uh it's a staff league so you know just kind of went with the flow a little bit on that um i still invested in some quarterbacks and i've moved them around a lot in this offseason so yeah, there's still some value to be had there yeah, absolutely. It's such a different ball game when it's super flex. I know the first super flex league I ever played in was Scott Fishbowl, uh, wearing the shirt from last year right now. And um it it's just a it's just different. The drafting is different. You know, it's I kinda sit back and wait on quarterbacks just ever so slightly with, with super flex, but um, you know, it's it's a lot of people are really super aggressive with it. It you know, it it makes for a totally different ball game with super flex, so it's fun. Yeah, I love it, man. I mean, I, I just think the quarterback position is so much of an afterthought in, in other in one QB leagues. I mean, you really don't have to invest in the position. Um, and it, it just kind of makes it a non factor. Like you said, it's hard to move them around. Um, and I just think there's a whole different level of strategy that comes with super flex too. And, you know, uh, some guys, you know, don't even care if they have that quarterback in that second super flex spot. You know, that's, a, that's another strategy point as well. But 
you know, for me, I, I go all in on the quarterbacks when it's super flex, and they tend to hold value better than any other position. So I, I think it's a real uh, fun way to play. Cool, cool. AJ, what you got? All right, so next uh, position of choice or not, defense and kickers. Defense or kickers. Both, neither, one, the other. What do you what do you think there? Uh I I have no I have no interest in playing with defense or kickers. Yeah. I really don't. Um, you know, kickers for me, there's not enough strategy that you could put behind it. Um, you know, I know some people, you know, if you're playing the DFS setups that have the kickers, there's a little bit there. You could try to play the weather, the kickers could sit. It's it's just it's not worth it for me. Nobody's trading kickers around. Um, you know, you're mostly they're mostly an afterthought, anyways. Um, you know, I don't want my matchup to come down to something that random, even in fantasy football. And and for me, defenses, I, I'm just not interested. Um, you know, let's let's keep it with the skill position. So um, I don't play in any leagues with defense or kickers, even if it's a redraft. I won't put those 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 spots in there. Yeah, we've we've kind of shifted that way for at least for the F6P league where we still have defense in there. So don't we? Defenses. We can't seem to vote it Ooh. off. I try every, yeah. I try every year. I can't vote it off the Island. <laughs> it's not I've, a full fantasy six league, pack staff. The league about. I run, it's a redraft and uh, you know, more keeper than dynasty, but I mean, there's no limit on how long you keep guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been trying every year, and everybody's just like, no, man, it's tradition. We've got to have it. Uh, the like, tradition oh, argument. Yep. Um, well, and that's why we can't get rid of it in the fancy six-pack league. So it's not yeah. a full staff league. We started that league as a fancy six-pack. This was like eight years ago now. Before I had enough staff to fill a full league, I did a staff and listeners league, staff and readers league, whatever. And um, so half of it is like fans, and now they've sort of dwindled off. But there's still a couple like traditionalists in it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Die, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, kickers and defense, no interest of me either. I, I totally feel you, and I'm not in any dynasty leagues um, that have it. And if if it ever does, I will quit. I'll be like, peace, bye. <laughs> um, it's not fun yeah, for me. There, there's no point. Nah. So a big debate, and I have this in seems like every league. The, so the very first dynasty league I was in, or am st- and still am, um, we started out with. I forget how many roster spots. And then there was a bunch of people complaining that there wasn't anybody available on the waiver wire. And so we, we reduced it and things like that. And, and just it's back and forth. Every league I'm in seems to be slightly different with how mm-hmm. many roster spots. And then between starting and bench, what's your personal preference? Yeah. So my go-to, uh, like if I'm setting up a, a standard dynasty league, uh, my usually what I do is 25 roster spots uh, and then three on the taxi squad. So so three guys with rookie eligibility um, that that start on the taxi squad and you can call them up, um, but they don't they don't hit against your roster unless you call them up off the taxi right. squad. Mm-hmm. So usually that's what I start with. Um, I'm all for the deeper leagues though, so I, I'm I'm glad to be on here talking with you guys. You know I like to run a variety of different leagues and I tend to get a little bit crazy sometimes with the setups that I do and have fun with it, but. Um, you know, in, in a really traditional sense, it, it's a it's a 12 team league. Uh, you're going to have 25 roster spots and three taxi spots. Now, that that does you know that does kind of hurt the waiver wire uh, a pretty good amount. You're not really you can't bank on picking up streamers off the waiver wire. But right. you know, the concept is it takes more strategy and, and more skill of the game to be able to know these types of players ahead of time, to look at your roster, to project by weeks ahead of time. Um, and it, it increases trading at the end of the day too, which I think is a fun part of it as well. If you want to get somebody, you got to make a deal half the time. Yeah. I mean, I think the way I would do it, if I ran it myself and started it from scratch would be around 27 total. Um, but I would still have like a taxi squad. I just found that like when we did 25, we, and that's what we did. We dropped it to 25 from like 28 or something like that. It just, it made the 12 team league a little too, um, you know, all the, all those guys that pop up in the very beginning of the year in your standard redraft league are mm-hmm. still there in yeah. your dynasty league. It felt like, and I was just like, it's not what it really supposed to be to me. A dynasty league is you have your depth. Like you have your team, you get injured. You're sorry. Right. You're out of luck it's- this year, you know, like, but you should have built some depth behind you that should have, you know, helped you if you built for two years from now, then okay. That's what you did. Um, 
you can't win every year. That's what it's supposed to be like. <laughs> right, um, right. So I don't know. I think I would make it a little deeper, honestly. Um, I, I just, um, I don't know. I've, I think 25 is, is right at the bottom of where I would go. I think I'd go slightly higher, though. AJ, what do you think about that? Yeah, so I'm I'm actually only in one dynasty league, um, and we Outside. have a taxi. We've got five guys. I think our main roster. We've only got seven bench, and then we had it is super flex, three receiver, one, uh, one regular flex. So it, it's definitely a small roster. I feel like um there is a lot of movement in free agency or a decent amount of movement definitely when people are injured it's like you know that's the immediate go to for for fab it's also a daily waiver which i i don't really like mm, um yeah. but I'm talking about yeah that. i mean <laughs> i feel like with the taxi it's i don't know I, I, i'm 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 like i said i'm still kind of new to it but yeah i mean the one thing the one thing that I, I would ha- like ask is, you know, if it isn't, you know, if, if the taxi is necessary, you know, we have it set up. So your guys are on it and they can only stay on for two years. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, once you pull them off, no matter what time of, you know, how long they've been on, they're not going back. I mean, is that how you typically do it? Or do you have it, you know, a three year, or like a time limit for the taxi squad? Yeah, usually the way I do is I have rookies set up, or I have taxi squad set up as rookie only. Um, and so you mm-hmm. only get that first year with them on there. But as soon as you call them okay. up, they're 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 up. And so you mm-hmm. can't, you know, it's not yeah. like minor league baseball. You know, you can't call them up and down. It's, it's uh, you know, you call them up, and then if you don't have the roster spot for them, you got to drop them at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's how ours is set up. That once they're up, they're up. Yeah, um, and it is it is only rookie. So. I mean, I do like that for, especially we just completed our rookie draft uh, like this morning, thanks to force ad by commissioner. So, uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the, the last guy yeah, that's not, that's not a good timed, sign. timed out twice. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like, all right. And he won the league last year. He's He's got a pretty ridiculous team. So, I don't think he cared much about the rookie draft, but. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what your draft pick was. There were there were league winners, I think, in this year's draft. So, yeah, yeah. this was round five, so maybe not. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I want to ask you though one more follow up question on the roster spots. So you said twenty five total, and then the three taxi. Yeah. What about like starting versus bench? Like so. Yeah. How many, yeah. So you obviously like the super flex. Is it just? Do you like? Obviously, one quarterback, two running backs. Is it three receivers or two receivers? So, actually, my favorite setup to do um, is uh, one quarterback, one running back, one wide receiver, one tight end, one super flex, and then um, five or six flex spots. Interesting. Um, It's – I think – you know, maybe I'm a little bit biased um, because the way I usually play and, and um, you know, the way I draft, and, I, and I'm sure we'll probably chat a little bit more about this later, is mm-hmm. I usually go really wide receiver heavy on my rosters. And so if yeah. I only need one running back to really invest in it, it really helps me. But I think people in general like the flexibility. Uh, they like to be able to get the guys they want. Um, and, you know, there's really no reason that you should have to play two running backs versus three wide receivers. So, um, you know, my standard or standard approach is to just have one of each of those slots and then uh, heavy on the flex. Yeah, that's kind of like a Scott Fishbowl approach, really. And I think they're yeah. they, I mean, they make you start a few more players in that. So I think they still do make you start two running backs, two receivers at least. But then all the rest are flex, I think. I'd have to go back right. and look totally, but I don't know if you've played Scott Fishbowl or not. But mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I, I was in uh, eight and nine, so ho- yeah. ho- hoping to get in ten. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, I've been lucky and been in it for the last three or four years, something like that. So I'm um, hoping, hoping I can keep the streak alive. Um, so okay, so we we kind of you know we kind of broke down the starting rosters and that kind of thing, scoring wise. Uh, I think we're all either PPR or half. I don't think anybody's going to stand at this point. <laughs> Jeez, I hope Correct not. me oh if God. I'm wrong, but uh, uh, I don't think that's anything to worry about. I think about. you should kick me off the show now if I said I was <laughs> playing standard. Touchdown What's only, PPR? Leagues, baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so 
The one caveat to all of this, besides the super flex, right, is tight end premium, where you get like an extra half a point or 50% bonus for tight end catches and and maybe first downs if you do first downs or something like that, right? Is yeah. that something you like for leagues? Maybe uh, not even just dynasty leagues, but just leagues in general. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind it. Uh, like, I, it's not going to make or break a league for me if, if, you know, they're telling me the startup rules and they tell me it's tight end premium. I think at the end of the day, man, the tight end position sucks. Uh, <laughs> you, you could buff it a little bit, right? Like, you can give them a point and a half. You can give them um, – I think it's the Scott Fishbowl that gives um, the point for the it's first the f- down if yeah. they catch a first down. I mean, you know, well, the, so at the end of the day, bonus, there's going to be yeah. six tight ends you want in, in the rest of the tight ends in the league right. you hate. So um, I usually I usually make the tight end position, you know, just standard with what everybody else is doing yep. or standard with uh, wide receivers, you know, for catches. But, um, you know, I got nothing against it if you want to give them a little bump. Yeah, man, you saw tight ends fly off the board in Scott Fishbowl 9 after they did that bonus yeah. for that. And uh I actually, I don't even know the roster of the guy who won. I know the guy who won um, from uh, Stompy, wasn't it? That was two years ago. So last yeah, year I think was it was, it was oh, right the one there, that yeah. won the yeah, past one. Fighting Chance. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of with you. Like, I feel like I can find enough late that I'll be okay. <laughs> and randomly, yeah. I picked Mark Andrews last year really late and it worked out really well for me. I also picked uh, yes, Howard, it <laughs> and it didn't work out very well for me. So it was half and half. Um, but yeah, I mean, taking the, you know, the Kelsey's and the Ertz and now Mark Andrews and obviously Kittle, they're going to get boosted so high up that I will just gobble up all that value behind mm-hmm. them and just worry about, you know, I'll take, I'll take the Gusecki's, I'll take the cooks in, in maybe not in a dynasty, but in like, you know, in a redraft, like that's what I'll do if it if it's tight end premium. Just wait for a couple of those guys to and just get whatever. <laughs> They'll be fine. They're yeah, mostly tight end. Good. They're mostly touchdown dependent anyway for tight ends, except for like Kelsey or Kittle. So, right. Um. Yeah, so AJ, I mean I think that's, I, I think I that's what I question. did in <laughs> Fish last year. I think I, I went uh, Kamara, Kittle, Luck, maybe or Kamara, Luck, Kittle. Uh, I can't remember. I mean, luck obviously was a horrendous choice, but you know, Kittle Kittle was nice. Uh, yeah. My team in general just was absolute well, garbage. Had, I, I know, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if I right? wasn't invited back just for performance <laughs> during the season, and it wasn't my fault. I Did promise. you drive luck and Big Ben? I, uh, yeah, I think I, yeah, I think I did. So you had like no quarterback after week one. You were no, dead. no, I had luck and Breeze. Oh, was I was. Week? It was debating between Breeze and and oh. uh, Big Ben, and I was like, eh, "I'll just go Breeze. He's sitting here." And then, <laughs> good call. And then Ben went down, and I was like, "Ooh, dodged a bullet there." And then a couple weeks later, I'm like, "Damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> what I put in, I got. I got Bridgewater and uh, somebody else. Uh, I didn't get Brissett, but yeah, it was bad. So, right. so I stole your question. Uh, so, man, go ahead. <laughs> oh, you're good. Um, <laughs> So as far as, uh, you know, waivers go and everything like that, um, do you like to have a different fab for off season and in season, or do you just have one fab that's opened up as soon as, you know, either the, your off season starts or as soon as your draft's done or, or whatever? Yeah. I mean, I prefer to just have one, to be honest with you, uh, just as a commissioner, honestly, I feel like that's a little bit easier to keep track of. True. Um, then having to worry about flipping it around, but uh, like I got nothing against it. Um, if I think I'm in like one or two leagues where you you spend the money in the off season, then you get some new uh, for the season. But I mean, quite frankly, if we're playing dynasty, man, like you should be able to manage your roster. And uh, and at the end of the day, too, like for me, you're not winning, you're not winning your league off of the waiver wire if you're playing in a, in a deep enough dynasty league. You know, you can you can get away with that and redraft. Um, you know. Uh, when I was doing, when I was originally writing redraft content, which is a while ago by now, I used to say that you could win your fantasy football championship on Tuesdays or whenever Absolutely. your waivers run, right? Um, but in Dynasty, you really shouldn't be able to do that. I mean, it should be for picking up the guys um, that are depth on your team. Uh, maybe you're ahead of the curve a little bit on some guys, but for the most part, you know, I think you should be able to manage your money year round. And I usually just kind of keep it with that cool, you know, either 100 or 1,000, you know, whatever denomination you want to use. And then, uh, that's it for the season. 
Yeah, do you I, like to uh, just to follow up on that? So, do you run it? You know, as far as do you have it as an off season? Like, once your fantasy mm-hmm. playoffs are done, is that the start of your off season, or do you wait till after your rookie draft? Yeah, so I wait. I wait until after the rookie draft. So I freeze it for the off season. Uh, you get your rookie drafts, and by the way, I do it so that rookie drafts are purely rookie drafts. I know sometimes yeah. people do rookie plus vet drafts. Um, I, I don't prefer that way. Um, and then usually what I'll do is expand rosters for the rookie drafts so that you yes. don't have to cut guys just to draft. <laughs> yes. I was ask um, that. <laughs> and then, but so then I give people usually like a week or so to process the roster, make them do roster cuts to get them back down to that number. Hell and yeah. once everybody's roster is under the right number, then the, the waiver wires open again. Um, and that's usually a good motivator oh, okay. too. So as a commissioner, you don't have to hunt guys down to get them to, to be on the roster. You know, all you got to say is, uh, listen, there's a roster that's not, you know, in compliance, then the guys will get on them, you know, themselves. That yeah. is a fantastic idea, dude. I'm the one, <laughs> the one league I'm in that has been harping like, and I think, like I said, I think we dropped our rosters down to like 22. It's so silly. Like and we got rid of taxi as well. Like they basically want redraft, but dynasty, like it's so crazy. Right. Um, and me and the other commission, we co commish cause we both couldn't just deal with it by ourselves. Um, right. We're both like, guys, this isn't dynasty anymore. This is like a this is just like a keeper league, I guess. Like I don't even know what to do. But <laughs> they uh they they don't even want to expand rosters. I finally had to like trick I had to like change the wording of the poll for the third year in a row to almost like trick them into buying into it. <laughs> and once they realized what they did, they were like, What the hell? I was like, Sorry guys. <laughs> Oh, like, nope. I don't know if that happens. <laughs> you guys all agree like, to it. You guys are gonna love this, by the way. Who wants to cut five people on your roster just to draft rookies uh, that you don't even know if you want to keep. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's right. so no, bogus. I, <laughs> I, I got the I, like I got the opposite experience. I could tell you I I was sitting there this afternoon and I'm in a, a sixteen the, the sixteen team league I was talking about earlier. We have five rounds of rookie draft. So uh you know it's pretty deep there. And I was I was sitting there trying to calculate on my roster if I could afford to trade for an extra pick uh, at at five ten because right. I wanted another guy. You know what I mean? Like that's the situation I want to be in. Um, and and you know figuring out how to cut my roster from thirty five to twenty eight, uh-huh. not uh you know twenty down to twenty two. Oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. So I you brought that up for so five rounds, right? And we've said this before. So AJ's in a league this five rounds. My league is only three rounds for whatever reason. And I've been in another one that's five. I don't know if I really have a preference. Like, I feel like after three, you're like, I, I don't want any of these guys. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe it's because my other league doesn't isn't deep enough, so I can't really roster them. Like, uh, what's your preference there? Uh, I got to tell you, you know, I, I'm sure part of it, too, is that, you know, I'm a I'm a big draft guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we, we I really go in depth. Uh, my guys with the rookie draft guide that we do. Um, we go 91 player profiles in that this year. We go as many guys as we can see being fantasy relevant. And so, um, you know, the chances of guys hitting in the fourth or fifth round of a rookie draft, no, they're not high. Um, you know, you're starting to pick UDFAs at that point. But right. at the same time, too, um, at the, sorry, it looks like my dog's fired up about UDFAs. <laughs> I was going to uh, say, your, your dog agrees. I feel totally. you, buddy. I know. I feel you. <laughs> He's a. <laughs> You know, uh, you got guys like Philip Lindsay that were UDFAs mm-hmm. and, and guys like Julian Edelman were drafted in the seventh round. And so for me, it's it's my opportunity in those fourth and fifth rounds to get the guys that get me excited. Right. These are the guys I've been watching tape on mm-hmm. uh, and I get to plant my flag and say, you know what, guys, I drafted him. I told you all he was going to be good. <laughs> uh, and if he's not good, he's not good. Who cares? You know, we're playing fantasy football to have fun. And part of that is getting your guys. So that's why Absolutely. I like it. Totally, totally agree, man. All right, AJ, you got anything else or you want to move on to draft strategies? Uh, no, that's good. Let's let's move on. All right, so let's talk about some draft strategies. And I know we've kind of, you know, d- dabbled into this a little bit as we've been talking. But first things first, I think this is the most obvious question that anybody has is when you are doing your startup draft, how do you – kind of value or or how do you attack you know rookies versus vets that you know and the vets you know yeah they might be gone in like a year or two but they could possibly win you that first or second year uh Mm -hmm. versus like taking maybe a flyer off like a rookie or second year player who you don't really know yet what they're going to be they might be okay but we don't know if they're going to be like as good as the vet who is right now right 
Yeah, uh, my strategy, and I just mentioned, right, I told you, you know, I, I'm a guy that does rookies. You know, I, I spend a lot of time doing rookie profiles. I, I watch the tape. I get excited about these guys. The draft is, you know, just about my favorite time of the year. Um, but that being said, if I'm doing a startup dynasty draft, I'm getting the veterans at, at value um, yeah. because that's <clears throat> these guys – can, like consistently they they fall for no reason you know what i mean like you can get julio jones in the fourth round of a fantasy league <laughs> so uh, a dynasty startup because people are acting like he's old and washed up like yo julio jones is going to be a wide receiver one for the next four years um mm -hmm. and you're getting excited about you know uh clyde edwards hilaire which is fine you know you can get excited about him but you know there's a decent chance that julio jones is just as fantasy relevant for just as long of a time playing the wide receiver position Bingo. uh in one of the best passing offenses in the nfl and so um you know I, i'm getting veterans all day um i wait until later in the draft um i think i tweeted out uh maybe a couple weeks ago here i was doing a startup draft uh with a with a few guys different dynasty podcast guys in the league and um you know i and it was uh it was before the draft, so we were just taking the draft picks, not the players themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I waited until the like 18th round of the startup draft, and there were still a ton of third round picks. And then my next six picks were just all six round picks, uh, or, or third round rookie draft picks. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know I ended up with six draft picks still in the rookie draft. They were all in the third round. Uh, I like most of the guys that I got like a lot, and so you can still get those rookies by waiting. Um, and not necessarily selling out, you know, at the top. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I'm kind of with you on I'm going to go get my vets. Um, <clears throat> I do like to try to get a young quarterback, though, because I feel like if you get that old quarterback, then you're really stuck. Like in Dynasty, that's a one position, even in a one quarterback league, where if you get the old quarterback, then you're kind of like, well, damn. If I, Especially in Superflex, right? If you don't have an early pick, you're not getting those young quarterbacks again. So if your quarterbacks are out the door – early in your dynasty league then you might be screwed um especially in super flex but um so i would definitely pass on like the breeze and the brady's and stuff like that even though they could probably win you this year maybe next year but um i i think every other position i'm, I'm going for the vets especially receiver i agree 100 percent agree with you there um yeah i mean in general <clears throat> um or here, I'm probably skipping ahead here, but I was going to say, in general, I'm drafting quarterbacks early in Superflex no matter what. Right. Uh, but right. I agree with you, you know. Uh, and, and I've been, you know, I've kind of, I've dabbled around with taking guys like Aaron Rodgers uh, early. And, you know, it, it just, it pays a lot better to invest in guys that are younger, especially at the quarterback position more than anything. I, I completely agree with that. Yeah, I got lucky in the Dynasty League that I'm in. And I drafted Wentz the first year. And after the first year, and it was like a either late second or maybe even late third. Like he wasn't drafted for some reason. It was one quarterback league, and he's been obviously except for the year he got hurt. You know, right. Uh, Should have won that year, but a loss in the championship game because of it. But he uh, he's been awesome. Otherwise, like it's been perfectly fine just for me. So, and he's young, so he's gonna be around for a while. So I don't have to exactly. worry about it. I don't have to worry about it at all. Yeah, I don't have that same. <laughs> yeah, you're uh, on my my league. Uh, no, I'm uh, struggling a little bit. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I had uh, yeah, I traded for Big Ben, which but you can't whatever. I gave. I think I gave up like Brissett and Cam, and took a chance on Ben like coming back and actually wanting to play for more than three games. So. <laughs> Um, that was that was whatever, and then I'm trying to I'm scanning through my thing now. I can't even see who my other quarterback is. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. It's not even on here. Um, no, Kyler Murray. I was gonna say, don't Kyler Murray? I yeah, was I was like, no, I have days. somebody good and young. What the yeah, hell? So he's, he's um, fine, but yeah, but I it was like watching that draft was absurd to just see the quarterbacks just absolutely fly. And uh, I, I think I got Kyler. I think I took him in the second because, like, I'm not sitting on, you know, whoever and just going to wait and pick what I can. So I, I knew I needed to get that. But all right. So position-wise, um, do you prefer receivers over running backs or running backs over receivers in Dynasty? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm somebody who invests heavily in wide receivers. Um, I've tried it both ways. You know, I, and, and I know people will, 
Uh, people seem to get really defensive about this topic in general um, with, with running backs versus wide receivers. And I, I for me, I'll, I'll go wide receiver heavy start, uh, you know, nine out, of, nine out of 10 times, unless I get stuck with like the 101 or the 102 in the dynasty startup. And then you're kind of like, yeah, I'll, all right, I'm going to sit here and take Christian McCaffrey and I'll yeah, be fine right. with that. But, um, you know, I'd much rather start wide receivers early um, and, and they hold their value better which is the most important thing. They have higher floors, which is really important. Um, and then, you know, if you're thinking down the road, it's a lot, it, it, it's smarter to draft your wide receivers in the startup, get those guys that are consistent. And then uh, rookie running backs tend to have a quicker impact than rookie wide receivers. Yes. So I would rather have to go into the draft and get rookie running backs to make a quick impact than trying to get a rookie wide receiver. And, and, you know, last year I think is a perfect example of that where Nikhil Harry was going off the top of the board in a lot of leagues and, you know, he didn't have a great season, a, a great rookie campaign, and everybody is up in arms and, and thinks that Nikhil Harry sucks. No, Nikhil Harry's a wide receiver. You know, wide receivers don't uh, tend to make large impacts in the NFL quickly. It, it's a different position. There's a lot more for them to learn. Uh, there's more volume for them to earn. Some of these guys, you know, aren't playing in press coverage in college, and it's a really tough adjustment uh, to get used to the pace of the game. Uh, and they're just not going to get the volume. Uh, rookie running backs, dude, NFL teams are ready to start putting carries on their body right away because they're, you know, nine out of 10 of these guys aren't going to get signed to a second contract. So NFL teams want to use them and they want to use them quick um, and, and they want to start getting their investment out of them. So, um, you know, you usually can get much quicker impact. You know, even a guy like Josh Jacobs last year who missed three games still, you know, was a borderline running back one. And Miles Sanders uh, was really hot towards the end of the season. So you can get those those quicker impacts out of the running backs. Yeah, I, I agree. And one thing, though, that you brought up about, like, you know, if you have the one dot, you know, one oh one. Right. Uh, kind of going back to the league configuration and setup. Do you prefer in your initial year, do you prefer a standard snake or do you prefer a um, auction? Um, yeah, that's interesting. I got to say, you know, it, it depends on what you're looking for. I mean, I think, you know, the traditional snake is kind of the way to go um, if, if you're doing a startup draft. Um, that being said, I love auction leagues. Um, I usually don't commission them. It just naturally, but I I love joining them. I'm still working on my strategy. It, it's not my strong suit. Um, I'll tell you guys right now. I'm in a I'm in the goats versus pros league run by uh, Goat District JD. He's a good dude, um, and that's an auction draft, uh, and it's fun because it, it goes on for a little bit longer, um, and it, you know it keeps you consistently engaged. I got to tell you guys, I have it. I have a you know dual monitors here. I'm looking at it right now, checking to make sure my bids are going through. Um, <laughs> I'm sitting here excited because I got a two dollar bid on Frank Gore, um, <laughs> and I got 19 auction? minutes on it, and I'm seeing if I'm going to get redlined. You know, oh, I wouldn't be excited to watch you know Frank Gore if I just took him with my 28th <laughs> round pick. You know what I mean? And so, um, and it it really requires a different amount of strategy. It requires some discipline with your budget mm -hmm. to know when to go all in, and it it also gives you this unique opportunity. Uh, I, I when I do startup super flex drafts, I go all in on quarterback. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's hard to do that with the snake draft because you got to be yeah. patient and it depends on what the board looks like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in this draft, I got Kyler and Dak. Now I used 50% of my budget pretty much to get those two guys. Uh, and so That's I got to, okay. I got to find a way to, <laughs> yeah, I got to find a way to make up that money somewhere else, but I got my quarterbacks. And so, yeah. you know, you can kind of, you, you have more flexibility and it's more fun that way. Yeah. The, the, the first dynasty draft I did was auction. Um, and it was honestly the first auction I've ever done for football. So that was a huge, like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And it was <laughs> five years ago. So um, I don't even remember it at this point. Like, I actually remember – the only thing I do remember about it is that I specifically told the commission I could not do it this night because I had my other drafts already planned. And, of course, he planned it that night. So I was doing <laughs> both drafts at the same time. And – I think I remember that. And I remember like all of a sudden something happened in the auction Whoa. draft where like I lost connection to only that one. And I have no idea why. And I, and it popped up and I was like, I missed the first 10 picks and I was like pissed. And so like 
I just I went receiver heavy. Just I was like panicking. So and like DeAndre Hopkins was on a big thing five years ago, right? But I bought right. him and it worked out great, obviously. Um, but of course, that was also the year that uh, oh man, Nelson was out. Jordy Nelson mm-hmm. for the Packers was out. Oh, so man, I went yeah. heavy on Cobb. I was like, I'm going all in on Cobb. <laughs> oh, he sucked, dude. He was <laughs> I'm so terrible. disappointed. I think he might have cost me idea. more than Hopkins, <laughs> which was crazy. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I feel you, man. I, I, I think I kind of like the idea of auctions for dynasties because you get to build your team a little bit more the way you want to, mm-hmm. to where you are kind of stuck. Uh, in in snake drafts, like you said, just kind of how the right. board falls to you, and like you're going, well, you know, I can wait another round or two for this guy, or maybe another few picks for this guy if I'm on the turn. You know, it doesn't always work out, but usually it does. Um, but in auction, like you've got to go for your guys, and maybe you pay a couple extra dollars here, so you got to keep, save a couple dollars here, so like you did with the quarterback. So I, I don't know. I think I like auctions for for dynasties more so than I do even redrafts. Yeah, man. And it, you know, it keeps, it keeps you engaged and in it too mm-hmm. for, for, I think longer. Um, and then you don't got to worry about, you know, guys rushing you when you're on the clock or, you know, if you're somebody who want, who likes to do the, the drafts quick, someone's not picking quick enough for <laughs> you, you know, you check in with the league when you got time and, you know, you got, and it's also, you know, your responsibility to keep up with it. So you got to make sure you, you keep an eye on it so or other doing, people are going to slip a guy past you. So you're doing a slow auction. Is that um, what I understand? Yeah, yeah. So I've usually when I do that. auctions, they're they're slow, and so interesting. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll do it where like either the the clock is. So usually it's um this one right now I'm doing is twelve hours, but it'll be twelve or twenty four hours, and so it's like, you know, you get to nominate one or two guys every day, um, and then anytime somebody's you high bid on a player. Um, so if somebody, if somebody got me with Frank Gore right now, um, you know, put $3 on the bid where he's at two, um, then he he would reset and you'd have 12 more hours to bid on him again. Um, and so that can get guys really pissed off too, right? You know, you wait down (laughs) till there's two minutes left and they're like, yes, I got Gore. (laughs) Son of a bitch. <laughs> and, you know, it, it really can get into a, a heated thing. I've actually seen people get really heated about that. Um, and so that that kind of makes it a little fun, too. But, um, yeah, that's I usually do it slow. I've done a couple of baseball auction drafts, and they're always live. Even the football one I did, they're always live. But they do. They go for, like, six hours, man. They're so long. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't it remember how long the football It definitely one makes went. it longer. But I enjoy it. The drafting is my favorite time of the year, so I don't really care. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, love I mean, drafting. Yeah, I, I'm with you guys. There's the reason my podcast is called the Dynasty Draft Room. You know, Absolutely. the draft part is fun. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, yeah, the draft is better than the rest of the season sometimes. <laughs> I mean, especially if you, you really like your draft and it turned out, and then everybody gets injured and you're like, son yeah. of a bitch, this team <laughs> sucks. But yeah, that's uh, that's to me, that's that's one of the the best things. So, um. The so I guess keeping keeping with that, you know, m- more for running backs, I guess, are handcuffs more or less important to you in Dynasty? Um, you know, I'm not I'm not really big into the the idea of a handcuff. Um, I I don't I, I don't know I don't really buy into the value of that. You know what I mean? Like, but I will I will go and get running back twos that I like. Um. Yeah, it, it really all depends on the situation. I, I think the only spot, you know, where where I can think of that, I, that I've been investing heavily in handcuffs is like Pittsburgh. Um, so I have a lot of James Conner shares from last year, um, which I haven't really sold off because I think there's still some good value there. But um, I love Anthony McFarland just as a player. Uh, you know, I really loved his tape. He was kind of a sleeper guy of mine. And so wherever I have James Conner, I've been trying to get Anthony McFarland but that's just because I like both of those guys. Um, I don't feel the pressure or the need to go out there and have a handcuff. Um, but again, you know, I mentioned it earlier. A lot of times I play in heavy flex leagues and so I don't necessarily need to play a running back. You know, if Saquon Barkley goes down, I'm not looking to play. I don't know whoever, whoever even backs up Saquon Barkley these days, Wayne Gallman, Wayne or, Gallman. or some crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Nobody is. No, <laughs> I'm coming out of retirement. The only I, time I I've ever handcuffed a guy in any of my dynasty leagues is um is is last year. So I've got Fournette in that one dynasty league that I've been in for five or six years now. Um, 
the rookie draft came around to me and, and it was like between like Ryquel Armstead and I forget who else. And I was like, you know what? They're both kind of the same on my board. Having Armstead could really work out for me. I'll just do it. You know, they were yeah. both pretty equal value. So it, it just kind of worked out that I got his handcuff and Hey, Fournette might get traded. So I might have two running back ones. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I mean, you know, the, the thing about the NFL right now is that most, most teams are running back by committee. So, right. You know, just because a guy can still have fantasy value and not be the running back one on a team. So, you know, like Justice Hill is a guy that I own in a lot of leagues. And, you know, with J.K. Dobbins coming in, it made things a little muddier, but mm -hmm. he kind of yeah. had the ability to have his own role last year. It didn't really pan out, but, you know, you can have those guys on your roster and, you know, slot them in in flex weeks when you have a lot of buys or something well, like and that. Well, he still could, even with Dobbins there. Like, maybe not this year, but maybe next year. Um, you know, because I, I have a feeling with Dobbins coming in, Ingram's not going to be there much longer. So yeah, they're going to run him out this last year. Of course, the they're going to they're going to yeah. yeah they're going to blow that tire big, big time. <laughs> which is so. which is part of why I traded him. Um, I was okay yeah. with that. Uh, yeah. And of course, people are talking um, talking up Dobbins in the in the league because he went uh, I think he went third in the rookie draft, and uh, I'm like, no, no, dude, he's he's just going to cut into to Hill and <laughs> and uh, uh, and Edwards is carries. He's not taking over for Ingram. You get out of here, take Come over. On. But I think it's going to be pretty even, honestly. I think they're going to yeah. see what happens. It'll be a, a little lean toward Ingram, but I think Dobbins will have his have his day. So I know I know we talked about this already. Kind of you kind of uh, alluded to it. But super flex, right? So you said that mm -hmm. you go heavy on the quarterback. What do you mean by that? Like, do you mean like your first two picks, your first two out of four? What does that mean? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously the board falls how the board falls, and sometimes you only have so much control over it. But, like, my ideal goal when I'm going into a super flex draft is I want to walk out of the first five rounds with three quarterbacks. That's that's always wow. my goal, um, which right. is pretty aggressive. And I'll tell you what, I, I try this. Um, this is, I don't know, maybe I should be giving out my secrets. Maybe it's not actually even a secret. <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes what I'll do, and I did this with the Scott Fishbowl last year as well, um, is I will draft back-to-back -back quarterbacks to start. Um, mm -hmm. And if, if enough other people take quarterbacks in those first two rounds, then it you've started a run. And what happens is that people start to scramble because they're like, oh, crap you know, I don't have any quarterbacks and the first 10 guys are off the board. Um, and then you start seeing people really reaching. Right. And so then they spend their third and fourth round picks going after quarterbacks that really shouldn't be coming off the board until the fifth, sixth, seventh rounds. And what does that do? That pushes wide receivers and running backs down the board to you. And so I tend to get great value at that point. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still getting potentially a running back one, in the third or fourth round, um, guys who would normally go in the second, but because other people have reacted to what I've started, um, you know, I find value in that. And, and that did work for me in the Scott Fishbowl uh, nine draft I was in last year. Um, it worked for me uh, in one league this year. I got super aggressive. Um, it's a campus to Canton league, and, and I've really invested uh, heavy into the quarterbacks. And so I actually started the first three rounds. I went Dak, uh, Russell Wilson, and then I went Drew Locke in the third round. Wow. Um, in that, in wow. that really okay. started a run. I mean, I think Derek Carr went in the fourth round, you know, because people Jeez. were just, you know, they were getting guys because they had to, you know, and and so it, it I, I kind of do that a little bit too, just to kind of see what happens. <laughs> Jerk. No, I feel like, yeah, what's the I feel like the Batman <laughs> meme, right? Like some people just like to watch the world burn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know if it's just the leagues I've been in with Scott Fishbowl um, since they did Superflex, but I haven't had to go quarterback super early, thankfully. Um, and I've and I've come away with some pretty good ones. Um, there was one year I got pretty nailed with injuries early, and and I had to pick a backup. Uh, didn't work out very well, but um, I mean, I knock on wood, I've made the conference finals every single year. Uh, I've just That's I awesome. missed I missed the finals by like three points one year i'm so mad but oh, um <laughs> but hey i've made the conference finals every year my my it's weird my my season is like up and down i'm always like just above 500 but i have like a ton of points i lose like terribly to everybody but i have a lot of points <laughs> um so i make the playoffs and then i go on runs because it's all points based after that um, right 
but uh yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't think I could ever go cuz like I mean to me like what do you think the board falls to you, right? Like the board falls to me like 1-8, right? Say three quarterbacks were taken by then. You're looking at like Alvin Kamara at 1-8. You're going uh, Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> like, that's what <laughs> that's what I look at, right? Or hey, right. I've got Don, Devontae Adams or DeAndre Hopkins staring at me at 1-8. Like, that's so hard to pass up to me because I'm still not, like, I had not completely flipped the switch to Superflex mindset. So I think that's where I probably will get hurt in Superflex drafts for the short-term future until I finally figure it out and realize that I got to do something like what you're doing where I had to be a little more aggressive with it. But I look at that value of the falls and it's so hard to pass up. Yeah, I feel like it's so easy to get caught in like the idea of like I need, you know, I need a running back. I, I need to get a tight end. Right. Um and like I've definitely fallen victim to that uh before, but I find if I just don't force it, you know, you really find your value. Like um you know, it, it's tempting to take one of these tight ends early, right? Like, you know, Travis Kelsey is sitting there in the second round and you're like, Especially "Oh man, the tight end you know, that's nice." Leagues. But you know, half the time Evan Ingram's there in the 6th round yep. and you know, that's a good value. And, and I don't usually force the tight end position. Uh, and this year, dude, if you totally whiff on it, and the worst thing that you have to do is take Hayden Hurst um, in that Atlanta offense in the 10th round, don't I don't hate it. My, yeah. Don't give my secret away. Although I've taken the last two fans six pack drafts. So I think everybody knows by now. <laughs> it's out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Hayden Hurst, man, he never really fit with what Baltimore wanted him to do, but. Uh, I think he's going to fit in Atlanta very well. So I I've been love, buying him everywhere. I love the fit and he's falling. He keeps falling. And I'm just like, okay, guys. <laughs> he's like, AJ's going to snake me now on him. I guarantee it. When Baltimore finally gave this guy the, the opportunity, uh, albeit very minimal, he performed every time. And he's fast too. He's, yeah. he's fast for very a big good. dude. Like, he, he'll haul some ass. So, I mean, I think he's going to fit in great in in Atlanta with with Matt Ryan and and it's going to be a very very seamless transition from them giving up Hooper to going to Hurst. Um, I, I put in a, a bid on them in my my dynasty and me and Joe were talking about it earlier just to try to keep other people honest. Like I'm I'm very quarterback uh, needy in that draft uh, or in that league. Sorry, um, but I'm very tight end heavy, so I don't really need him, but shit i'll take him he's 26 you know i mean i've got kittle godert and cook currently on my roster i traded hooper and got back a third that i turned into uh robert woods for ingram and and a, a some other pick somewhere i think um and then uh, yeah i just i i don't really need a tight end but yeah, we got Kittle. I'll throw 10, end. <laughs> 10, 12 bucks on it. Why not? Right. You should be drafting for value. You know, it's it's the same thing the best NFL teams do. Why did everybody love the Ravens draft? Because they took J.K. Dobbins in the second round, even though they have good running backs, because they know yeah. how to draft for value. You know what I mean? And so um, you should be doing that in your in your fantasy leagues too. Uh, you can always move guys around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why that's why I'm wearing my Baltimore jersey tonight and not my Eagles jersey because I'm much happier with Baltimore's draft than the Eagles draft. <laughs> oh, you mean you didn't like getting uh, four slot receivers? <laughs> no, I mean, oh, but they're, they're going to throw four slot receivers out there when everyone else is injured again come week ten. No, not, not going <laughs> to do a damn thing with that. I mean, the only thing I can hope for is that Dak continues to bypass you know, multiple great offers for greed and corruption, just like our government and, <laughs> uh, and just suck this year. I, that would be hilarious to me if they put in, you know, the guy whose hair matched his former Jersey instead of Dak, just cause Jerry Jones wants to make a point. All right. I, I don't know. I don't know, really know where I was going with that. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what just happened there. Um, Drinking so more trucks. We need to move. We need to, it's, we need to move fault, on to some in it season took me a little and while, season. but I got there. I think. <laughs> so let's move on to some team management. So you know, once the drafts happen, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, get your opinion. Some things here, AJ. Go with the first yeah, question here. So what's, yeah, as far as teams go, you know, what's your general trade strategy? How do you attack um, them, approach them, whatever you want to like, call it. Yeah, if you're, 
you know, if you're weak in one position, you know you're weak in one position, but you're very heavy in another. Obviously, there's your your trade, mm-hmm. you know, setup. But is that something you're still gonna go with via trade, or are you just gonna try to work during the draft? Yeah. So I think one of the things that I try to always think about, um, I in the off season, all the way up up through like August. I'm trading for value. You know, I'm looking around, I'm reading articles, I'm listening to podcasts, I'm I'm doing my own homework, and I'm looking for the best values out there. And I'm going to go and try to trade for those guys, you know, all day. I don't care if it's my, you know, seventh wide receiver and, and I only have two good running backs and I know I need more running backs. I'm not I'm not worried about it. Um and and by until like August and once you hit August, you should have been doing this all off season, finding these values. Then you assess your team and say, you know, hey, I'm in a super flex league and I only have three quarterbacks. And you know, uh, if one of these guys goes down, I'm I'm you know I'm in trouble. Let me go and, and get somebody else. Um, and and then at that point, I think you know you start to get more aggressive with that. But for the rest of the year, man, I'm, I'm looking for the values. Um, there's a lot of values in small trades. You know, don't go around trying to buy Pat Mahomes right now. Like, you're not going to get Pat <laughs> Mahomes. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, go around trying to buy uh, – I bought Mike Williams today. Um, you know, I love the pairing of Mike Williams with Justin Herbert. He's a guy people are low on because Rivers was never really able to utilize his skill set. Um, and so I went and I traded um, – what did I trade? Here we go. Uh, we're talking about Hayden Hurst earlier. I traded Hayden Hurst and a, a 2021 fourth for Mike Williams and a 2020 fifth. Um, it was the five ten in the rookie draft that I was talking about. And so, um, you know, like those are the types of moves that I'm doing this time of the year. Um, also, you know, when we're talking strategy and talking future draft picks at this point, I'm trading future draft picks, 2021 draft picks, go ahead and take them. You know what I mean? I'll get back in that action next year when I know what those picks are, when I'm trading for mm-hmm. them. Um, but if somebody, you know, is, is looking to buy your, your future picks, go ahead and do it. You know what I mean? I don't know what's happening in a year, man. So so I'm giving up those picks and I'm getting guys that can help me win now. Yeah, I mean, hey, this time last year we all thought uh what's the guy's name from Clemson, Antony or it, it, Yeah, Etienne, uh, yeah. Etienne. 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 We all thought he was coming out and he stayed back. We were like, "What the hell?" Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like broke, just bro. lowered the running back values big time, but everybody still just like went all in on it. So yeah. Very interesting stuff. Um So I guess to to follow up on this a little bit, like how do you value the future the future value picks? So like you were saying, like you want to trade, you know, you're you're willing to trade all those 2021 picks right now, but like, how do you value them? Like, what do you know to give up? Yeah, I mean, in, in to in you know, just to clarify, I'm not giving them away for free or anything. Of course, uh, <laughs> well, that's but, why uh, I asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. Usually what I'm trying to do, um, you know, I, I try to think of it as a, a round back from this current year. So like, you know, think about what you're willing to give up for, you know, a first round pick this year, you know, you drop that around. So if you're giving it next year, uh, here, let me, let me say that a little bit better. So if I'm giving up a 2021 first round pick, that should be the same value of a 2020 uh, second round. Hold on. If I'm giving up a first round pick next year, it should be equivalent to a second round pick this year. Um, okay. and so, you know what I mean? Like, like it, it kind of falls like one year back um, because you have to wait so long to use it. You lose some of that value in the deal. Um, and, and so, you know, that is something that you have to keep in mind um, when, when trying to trade for those guys. Yeah. I, I always kind of wonder that like, you know, different trade calculators, whatever you want to use them, like uh, <laughs> say this, different things, but I, I use them as just kind of a, I just, I'm just kind of curious type of thing, but yeah, I mean, I know this 2020 draft was so highly touted for like, it feels like a couple of years, right? Um, mm-hmm. People were not, people were just like dying to get into this and giving up way too much. I felt like, um, but I feel like you're, equation there of next year's first is worth this year's second is pretty equal unless it's like the one one right like that's probably not going to work like maybe the later half of the first is worth some sort of draft in the second but um 
If you have the one one, I feel like, but you don't know if you have the one one. That's the thing. Exactly. Nobody you knows. don't know what like, it is, so that's so, what like, makes it difficult. Yeah, that's the problem. Like looking at at my draft in, in my league this year, and I traded my first round pick pretty early in the season last year, and I got Hooper and Miles Sanders, um, which as an Eagles fan I loved, and you know as a uh, you know, seeing seeing what Hooper did, I was like, all right, whatever. This guy's dominant. Now I have him and Kittle. You know, I'm I'm stacked here. So I ended up flipping Hooper, like I said, for third. But basically I looked at it as, well, Sanders was my first round pick for this year. And I tried and tried and tried to get back into the first, but no one was selling by the time I was trying because this draft was so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So um yeah i i don't know i mean i think it's it's definitely definitely something to keep in mind and and what you're doing but um so as far as trading the young players like that and future picks i mean do you trade young players or future picks for vets if you have a chance at a championship in you know that particular season you know even though knowing that the vets might only have one or two years left yeah yeah, I definitely, I will definitely sell off picks for for vets, um, in in trying to make that impact. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, you should be trying to win your fantasy championship every single year, unless you know that you have a rebuild team, which is important, right? It's like, it's just like the regular NFL. You know, you either want to be really bad or really good. You know, you don't want to be in between because nobody gets anywhere when you're when you're just middling. So, um, you know, if if you are a playoff contending team, sell off your sell off your picks. You know, make good deals. Obviously, don't give them away cheap, but but get some guys that can help you make an impact and, and make a run at the thing. Um, you know, make smart investments. Don't get totally crappy short term players. Um, but you know, go ahead, go ahead and make an investment. And then what I do to recoup, you know, picks back. Um, you know, in the off season, it, it's really easy to trade for third round rookie picks, to trade for second round rookie picks, um, and, and that's what I do in a lot of my leagues. So. Um, uh, here's a good example. Uh, I run a, a premier style league, so it, it's it's this is kind of the the wild like setup that I told you. To kind of get into. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's nice. there's thirty six there's thirty six teams, uh, and there's three different uh, tiers or you know divisions would be the typical word. Um, but you know each tier has the full player pool themselves. Um, and each year the best three players in each tier move up. Uh, the worst three move down. Um, the top tier plays for more money. Um, and there's, there's, um, you know, dispersal drafts in between and, and crazy stuff like that. But, um, you know, this was, you know, uh, I was making a run at tier one, which is the big pot. And so I sold off a lot of my draft picks. Uh, my run came up a little short, mm. you know, I ended up like fourth in the table, um, in the top three cash. So I didn't end up making any money that year. Um, but I had sold off my, all my picks, you know, my whole team. And so then I spent some time this off season, investing in in trading second round picks so i ended up getting three second round picks and while we were on the draft jonathan taylor had fallen to 104 um and i was able to sell off my three second round picks to move up and get him at 104 um and so i ended up with a with a high first round pick you know just by selling and flipping guys around so Mm -hmm. um you know i was fortunate that that the board fell that way but you know i was strategic and i was able to go up and get jonathan taylor on a team where i desperately needed a running back I got to ask you, not to get off topic here, but how do you set up a first year league like that? Like who goes to the top and who goes to the middle and who goes, who starts at the bottom? Yeah, I got to tell you, dude, I thought this was just going to be this like crazy idea that nobody was going to be interested in. And I was like, I was like 36 guys. Yeah. You know, I'll post on Twitter. This will probably take about a month, month and a half to recruit everybody. You know, I'll have guys that are interested, talk to other guys. I posted uh, one, I posted one tweet. And I said, hey, I kind of got this idea. I had done up the rule outline document and it filled within like 36 hours. It, wow. it was it was wild. Um, but for the first year, I let guys choose what where they wanted to start. Hmm. Um, and, you know, there were some guys. So the top tier is a $50 buy-in. The oh, okay. second tier is a $25 buy-in. And the third tier is a $10 buy-in. Um, so, so some guys were like, this is a, this is a weird ass concept, dude. I, I'm only going to go $10. Yeah, you know, I'm going to make sure this is, this is legit. And, and there's some guys who won't play leagues less than 50 bucks. Right. And so, yeah. um, and so those guys went for tier one and, 
Um, it, I think some people understood the strategy and, and, and really kind of dug into the fun of it. And they said, I want to go for tier two because there's a 50% chance I'm either getting promoted or relegated from this tier. Um, and so, you know, cause the top three and the bottom three move in that one. And so, uh, you know, they got really into that idea. So what happens if you, if you get moved up, you got to pay the, the higher value, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you get moved into a new, so you get moved into, think of it. It's almost like you get moved into a totally new league. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so the higher league, so then you have to pay the $50 entry fee if you move up from tier one to tier or from tier two to tier one. Yeah. But you could have the same players as other people at this point once you start moving around. Right. Yeah. See, here's where, here's the catch. So when you move up, so the three teams that move from tier two to tier one, mm -hmm. they have their own dispersal draft just from the players left behind from the guys that got uh, relegated oh, from no. tier one. Wow. Yeah. So you're, you're kind of seeing it. So, yeah, so you're okay. drafting. And, so and then, you know, it, it like really kind of feeds draft. into the premier league <laughs> concept because if you're, hmm. if you're talking premier league, usually those teams that get promoted, there's a good chance they get relegated back down the year right after. Right. So yeah, you gotta, yeah. Um, but what we even you got do, fourth man. Congrats on that. Damn. That's impressive. <laughs> actually. I mean, you basically were an expansion team at that point. If not worse, because expansion yeah, teams you, at least get to pick like from the scraps a little bit from the good teams. <laughs> right. So so the only, you know, the only saving grace and, and guys have kind of had to feel out this strategy because we're just going into our second year now, but guys have had to feel out the strategy because um you can your your draft picks actually carry with you. Um and so and the teams that get from are yeah, the teams that get promoted. Um, because they have the crappiest teams from the dispersal pool, their picks get moved to the top of the of the rookie draft order. And so if in tier two, you had gone and traded for three first round picks um, and you got promoted, then you carry those first round picks with you and everybody else gets pushed down the board. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, so there's like 12 layers of strategy, man. That's I told you I can get real crazy. A ton of this. like <laughs> spreadsheet and You're managing that? Tracking. Oh, oh man. Yeah. And I haven't even gotten to scoring. We don't, do, we do, don't do, uh, do you have a, <laughs> do you have a team to help you like keep track of all that? Cause, uh, I, if not, I have man, learned to pour one love out for you. MFL. <laughs> I, I really, it took me a while to come around to my fantasy league, but I'm actually able to do all of this through MFL. Wow. Um, dude, you gotta, you gotta like teach sweet, me because I'm terrible at commissioning. I'm a computer guy. I still can't figure out MFL, man. It's so complicated. Like, <laughs> Make the UI well, maybe better, the problem fellas. Is that you're a computer guy. I think you're, you're too advanced yeah. for it. Man, I go in there. I, I, I'm I look not at a the... computer guy. I know my way uh, around computers to a point in order to like log on, <laughs> go to the <laughs> internet, do spreadsheets. I'm a spreadsheet like maniac, but uh, I I don't, I don't like MFL. Have you that ever much. tried like, to commission an, an, an MFL league, oh, AJ? Fuck no, 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 dude. I look at the no, MFL league you. commissioner page and I'm like, I I don't I don't know. My eyes are crossed. I'm like, there's so many options and they all some of them sound the same. You're like, oh, okay, let's draft something. I should click here. No, what I want isn't there. Back yeah. out. Click it's, here. It's like. It, well, it, I understand why people why people don't like it because it did like uh, when I started this and when I started this league I had only run like one or two on MFL before this and I was just kind of like all right man I I mean this league is filled with a ton of good dudes they're patient with me you know what I mean like like there's no re there's nobody really you know being a jerk or anything like that we actually uh, our tagline is, is is don't be a, a jerk it's not the word jerk but that's fine um, yeah. <laughs> um, nice. and so. Um, and, and I have, you know, there's just some awesome guys in it. Um, you know, they did custom graphics for it just cause they liked it, um, and stuff like that. And so it's been fun, but I got to tell you when I first, you know, opened up the commissioner side of MFL, your, your eyes just get wide. Um, and it's, it's a lot of trial and error to figure it out, but, um, you know, it's also things like, uh, for a whole year, I tracked our scoring off, off sheet. And then I realized MFL has a setting for it. Um, because we don't actually do wins and losses. Um, we do, you get two points if you if you beat the other team that week, and then you get one point if you score in the top 50%. Um, so we use victory scoring. Victory scoring. Uh, again, kind of, nice. you know, simulating the point style of, of soccer. Um, yeah. And so, but That's I was doing that fine. on my own for a year, 
And then somebody hit me up and was like, hey, man, just so you know, like MFL does this. <laughs> this is here. <laughs> oh, man. You just have to check this. Yeah, box I, get it. And like, God damn it. I get it. That's the awesome thing. It's awesome thing about MFL is that like it is customizable to yeah. everyone. You just have to figure out how to do it. Yeah, <laughs> you got to figure it out. I man. can't figure it out. Man. I will I say that it's definitely got the options. It's it, it. I like the site. I like what it's done for the you know the leagues that we've used it in from the fantasy six pack side uh, for all of our mocks and everything like that. It's super friendly for that. Um, the only knock I have is that the the app is slightly different oh, than the, app the is, web. Well, the app is never theirs. use the app. Never use the app. Well, the well, MFL I, Platinum I app. Try is, not is fine. to. Well, no, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not using the app. The I use the the iOS, you know, website that comes up. So I need to figure out hmm. the the hold down button yeah, to not. go to the actual web, <laughs> so I can see a full draft because I can't do that. And it's like make your draft pick. I'm like. I have no idea who was just picked. So the MFL sure, Platinum I'll just go app off of these bad. guys left. It's gotten a lot better this year. I, I hated yeah. it a year or so ago, two years ago maybe, um, and I just gave up on it. And somebody told me it was good again, or they finally like improved it. And it's a hundred times better than what it was before. So if you haven't used it in a while, Matt, I would I would give it a try again. Um, okay, it's, it's pretty yeah, solid. Yeah, I I've kind of given up on it, um, but I'll I'll definitely give it another shot. Yeah, I I did too, man. I, I'm with you. But all right, let's finish things up here. We got one more question. Um, you mentioned you got your draft guide, but you know, what is your method for evaluating these rookies? Yeah. Great question. Um, I watch too much tape on them now. Um, <laughs> no, it's so fair, be, fair. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> I mean, the, the good thing is I love college football. Um, I love college football just as much, if not more than the NFL. Um, you know, it, it's, it's so fun for me to, to do this and to watch all these games. Um, and so, uh, what I do you know, and, and I've actually, I've set up my, I have a master sheet. I call it an evaluation sheet. Um, and, you know, I track, I kind of, at this point in the year, uh, you know, I'm putting down anybody who might be interesting and in, in draft eligible in next year's class. So I have a sheet of about 150, 200 guys that could potentially, you know, declare for the 2021 draft. Um, and what I'll do is, is over the summer, I do what I call summer scouting. So I'm flipping on tape. Um, I have 10 categories that I grade each of these guys on um, different traits. It depends on the position. Um, I'm scouting different things. Um, in, in, it, in the summer, it, it's light scouting. It's just getting an idea for who might actually be the most relevant guys. You know, a couple games of tape here. You put some, you know, preliminary scores on them. Um, and then once we actually get into the season, I'm watching these guys live week in and week out, you know, getting a good feel for them. But again, I'm not, I'm not grading them. Um, and then once you get towards the end of the NFL season, so once it hits December, November, December, then I'm really flipping on the tape and I'm watching, you know, seven to eight games of tape on most of these guys, wow. um, at least the top guys. Um, some of the smaller guys, I do three games. You know, I don't I don't give anybody a grade without watching at least three games of tape on them. Um, and, and then, you know, what? like I said, I'm grading them out on 10 different traits, um, averaging those those grades out and then they get a preliminary score for me. Um, and that ends up being the vast majority of my equation that I that I rate them on. It's about 70% of, of their total grade. Um, and then when I go in, um, I, I actually don't do major adjustments through the combine um, because I don't really believe in that. Um, you know, the combine will help your draft capital. Um, it'll make me go back and watch some tape. So if a guy... You know, if Chase Claypool, you know, he ran what four four six or something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll go back to the Chase Claypool tape and I'll see if he actually plays like that. And he really doesn't. You know, I know Chase Claypool truthers are out there. He really doesn't. So I'm not going to up his speed. Um, or a guy like Henry Ruggs. If you didn't know Henry Ruggs was fast before the combine, I don't know what you're doing when you're watching tape. So he already <laughs> had a maxed out, you know, pretty much maxed out speed score for me. So I didn't go back and, and bump him. I didn't give him double credit for that. Um, but when it comes down to the draft, I'll then go in and about 20% of their grade for me is their landing spot. I think sometimes people overestimate the, the importance of a landing spot. It is important, but it's not everything. Um, and then I'll do about 10% about of my grade is uh, draft capital uh, because I do believe draft capital is important. And I'll give guys different scores based on that. Um, for landing spot, I evaluate them based on their scheme fit the weapons around them, the volume that I project them uh, to get, and then uh, how quickly they can contribute. So, um, you know, that's where guys like running backs get bumped up in the scores, and that's how you kind of equate for that. 
Um, and then with, with draft capital, that's a purely, you know, you get this many points for being drafted, you know, these positions, if you're day two, uh, you know, a little bit lower UDFAs, you know, you only get one point out of 10. And so, um, I kind of work it like that, average out those scores. Um, and, and then, you know, that's my personal rankings. Um, and when we do the draft guide, we have five different guys doing this whole process. And so wow. each player is graded out by at least three of us. And then we go in and average those. And that's how we get our scores. I'm going to take a wild guess and say you don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know. Yeah. believe it. So there's no way I'd have time for that. I I'll, I'll tell have... you what, dude. Uh, my co-host for the Dynasty Draft from Zach, he does the NFL side of things. He watches even more. This guy's nuts. I tell him all the time. He watches two. He, his draft guy this year had 300 prospects in it, something like that. He's got three kids. I'm like, Ooh. dude, when are you when are you grinding tape? He's like, yeah, usually between like midnight and 4 a.m. is my prime. <laughs> I was like. What? I'm like I, I, I'm like barely trying to sleep during those hours because I'm winding <laughs> down from working. It's I like, can I can do it till and like then watching kids. Th- I can do like till two or three a.m. Like Ugh. maybe one night a week, and then after <laughs> okay, that, I'm depends toast. on like I can't do it. Uh, I can't do it. Yeah, but I, depends on what I pop. I, can, <laughs> I mean, I can, certain days I could probably make it work, but there's not there's, on, not on the regular. That's that's impressive. There are certainly times of the year where where you know you really you know you really feel the grind of it, and you know there's a reason they call it grinding the tape sometimes. Um, and you know you kind of you get used to you know where you can watch tape uh, that that's good cut ups. You know I don't watch full games. You know I, I'm I'm watching cut ups and, right. and watching and you know you kind of yeah. figure out what to look at and what to ignore. You know I'm not watching unnecessary games if if you know Georgia is playing you know, FCS, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's Georgia's not doing anything Southern. for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Although, yeah, I guess, you know, as a Tennessee fan, you know, talking about uh, the, the regional Georgia schools isn't a good look for me after this year. So <laughs> Georgia, yeah. Georgia state gave me something else to think about. Uh, no, it's all good, man. All right. Well, this was phenomenal information, man. Yeah, I, I love absolutely, talking about man. this. You know, it's, it's honestly a topic we haven't delved into too much on on the show uh you know we've we've talked about our dynasty leagues here and there but you know it's nothing that we've really gone into too much depth about so this was great information but uh before we let you go uh remind everybody where they can find you we could just slide up right next to us uh, on the on the youtube screen here so uh but yeah go ahead and let everybody know where we can find you and and what you got in store for us yeah, man, absolutely. And so, you know, I'm on Twitter at the FF underscore educator. That's the best place to get me. But, uh, you know, I, I think the biggest thing right now is um, is checking out the Dynasty Draft Room podcast. Um, 365, we do one episode a week. That's the NFL Draft. We do one episode a week. That's Dynasty Fantasy Football. Um, and we had such uh, fantastic feedback. We did a rookie profile series. Um, and I did that with John Lobb, the gridiron scholar, who's, who's just an absolute uh, tro- treasure trove of knowledge uh, when it comes to fantasy football uh, and football in general. Um, and, and that was so well regarded that me and John are going to actually do a college football slash Devi episode as well all year nice. round. And so, nice. yeah, starting in June, you'll get three episodes a week uh, with Dynasty Draft from, you know, just covering every angle of fantasy football that you possibly can. Um, and then checking out online dynasty draft is where you can go and grab that draft guide that I was talking about. Um, the update will come out this weekend with all of the updated rankings and grades based on landing spots and updated analysis. And, uh, like I said, 90 players in there, uh, that draft guide's only 10 bucks. Um, and I gotta tell you the graphics guy that we had doing it, Mark Mathic, uh, he hooked us up, man. It, it looks so nice too. So I'm really hyped about that. It's the first year we did it. And we have gotten uh, a ton of downloads on that. So um, if you want to kind of dig into some of the the rookie stuff that I just mentioned, you know, that's that's a great way to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. man. Definitely check those out. I've read a few from uh, various different sources. I like reading everybody's stuff. So I have to check that out myself, man. But uh, all right, well, glad to have you on, man. It was a great discussion, like I said, and uh, we'll have to do it again sometime. Absolutely, guys. Thanks so much. All right. See you all later. Right. Thanks, man. All right, AJ, uh, that's all I got. You got anything else to add before we cut it loose? No, man, I'm good. All right, well, that's it for me. We will see you all next week probably. See you. All right, light up.